what makes a champion and what allows a champion to win a World Latte Art Championship. Today we're going to go through the top 16 competitors from the most recent World Championship. We're going to break down the points and we're going to show you what they could have done better and what they did right to get through those rounds. There are seven points in the World Latte Art Championship that you have to get and it's four versus versus three essentially if you get four you're in. One of those points to start is the speed point. Whoever gets the coffee down on the plate first is gonna get the speed point. The second point is going to be the clean cup and presentation point. If you have any bulging of the milk above the surface or it's underfilled or you have a streak of coffee around your cup, you're gonna lose that point. You have symmetry and balance. How balanced is the pour inside of the actual espresso? And then what is the symmetry like of that? Are they symmetrical if you look right down the middle and splice it in half. You have degree of difficulty and creativity, and they actually lean towards creativity first, and if a pour is not creative, they will go to which one is more difficult. Execution is who did the pour better based on what is the standard of execution for those style pours. Line clarity is gonna be a milk texture based point. It is how crisp are your lines without of course having thin milk. What is the difference if one competitor, if one competitor's puffy, you're gonna lose line clarity and the other one has crispness, they're gonna get line clarity. And lastly, you have color distribution. Because Latte Art is a mix of white and brown, you wanna make sure you get some of that brown into the white. And based on those points in a March Madness style bracket, the winner that wins moves on and the loser dies. So starting with our first round, we have Matthew Bolchi, who is a three-time world championship. I'm pretty sure he did them back to back to back, which has never been done before. And he is coming in now for his fourth win, which spoiler alert, he does not get this season. Maybe next time, we'll see. And we have Omar on the other side, who is not a world champion yet, but is gonna put up a pretty strong fight for this pour. So we'll skip ahead to the actual pours. And here you can see what the pours were put down. Uh, Maddie is going for a slow Zeta, commonly made famous by Nicely Able out in California. Uh, and this is definitely something that they would have connection with because Maddie and Nicely are like this. There is a small sector of people that pour pours similar to this. Uh, and while the left side might look a little more technically advanced, it actually is not in terms of flow. When you're flowing with milk, Maddie's pour is a lot harder to control because he's using a heavy flow and he's moving backwards in just the right places to make it all tuck and have this open leaves in the center. And that general shape is hard to achieve. Uh, but Omar here is going for something very classic. He's going for a wing wing. Uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five, uh, and then a solid. So a wing wing five solid. Uh, this unfortunately has a bit of an execution error. Uh, kind of looking at it, you can see that the base is incomplete at the top, and the top is actually the first lines that you form, which means Omar was was coming into the cup either a little bit with not enough ripples or he was just a little bit too high, but it's probably the former because you can see at the very tip top right here, there is a pretty good connection to the actual milk and espresso because he's got a very strong border, which means his pitcher landed on the surface efficiently enough to create that stark contrast. That's a great technique, but it kind of looks like maybe he didn't follow through with the ripples soon enough or they weren't, generally speaking, I think, I think these missing ripples right here just come from those ripples not being ripply enough. He needs to ripple wider in the beginning, which you can see he did start to catch his pacing here, but at that point, it was probably too late. It also might have something to do with milk texture in general. His milk looks great for latte art, uh, but generally speaking, it doesn't have some of the contrast and stark line clarity up in these upper layers over here, which makes me think maybe he could have swirled the milk, swirled the milk a little bit more before doing the pour and that would have probably gotten him a little bit more looseness and he may have been able to finish those, those subsequent layers later as well as those missing layers in the base. Um, missed opportunity, but that's okay because you know, Maddie over here does have some smushed lines as well and a little bit of asymmetry in that top heart because of course with the natural flow of this, when you tuck that heart back in, one side's always gonna be higher, but the judges might judge you against that, even though that is technically how this pour works. To make it not higher on this side and have this side be equal, you would have to tuck in at an angle, which means you'd have to really exaggerate this pour at the beginning and then cut through at a different angle. So you're kind of doing this side to side with the intention of going through at a different angle angle because you know that that tucking in is going to wrap on one side a little bit higher. You don't have to do that. I, don't, I wouldn't change anything Maddie did here, but that is essentially how that would work. So if we're going to go down point by point, 
uh, we could go ahead and look. I believe that Matty Bolchi has color distribution. You can see the color is wrapped into all those layers. Uh, it looks like Omar might have line clarity, though when we look at it from further back, it does actually appear that maybe Maddie has it. Hard to say because you're not actually, we're not at the judge's table. You can kind of see here, it does look like Maddie might have line clarity, but his lines are so bold and you're versus a winged tulip. If the wing has good milk texture, you're gonna probably win line clarity in those cases. Uh, but in this case, it's, it's hard to tell from a viewer perspective, would definitely need to be a judge in the moment to tell for that one. Uh, but Maddie for sure has execution. You can see Omar here has a lot of squiggle through the cut through. And if you're not cutting through properly, you're gonna lose execution point. Omar also has some symmetry issues. And while Maddie's has a few symmetry issues as well, notably here and here and here, the judges are gonna count the amounts of symmetry issues you have. So Omar has, I mean, symmetry issues for each one of these top hearts, as well as the base, as well as the cut through, and as well as that middle layer right there. So the judges are going to count each layer you miss. So the more layers you have, the more opportunity of messing up you have. In this, I would argue that Maddie has degree of difficulty based on how this pour works, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the judges gave degree of difficulty to Omar just because it is a classic wing wing 5-1. Um, with that, judges often like to count the amount of times you dip the pitcher in and out of the cup. They will value that for difficulty. Uh, but personally, what Maddie poured to me is more difficult to do with my hands. Hard to say what the judges said here, um, but so far I have many of the points going for Maddie. Um, and we'll see, we have Maddie with color, we have Maddie with speed, we have Maddie with execution, and remember you only need four. So if Maddie can get line clarity, degree of difficulty, symmetry and balance, and clean cut point, he's already the winner. And he did indeed move on from this round. You can see some camaraderie right here as they wait for their judgment. Uh, that's definitely the hardest part of the competition is waiting judgment. It's kind of like when we go to the gates of heaven, uh, we have to await our trial and assumingly God won't come at you for the latte art you poured in competition. All right, next up we have Sean Binsby and we have Brian. I love both of these people. We're gonna skip right ahead to the pours. Uh, this is pretty intense. Both of these pours have a lot of errors. Not to take away from what they did. Uh, it is actually really hard. Hey, there I am right there in the corner. It's really hard to pour a swan in competition. There's a lot of elements going on, but that being said, we're talking about a competition of the best in the world. Sean Binsby is a past world champion. Uh, Brian is not yet, but we will see in the coming years because Brian did indeed put down pretty monster pour here. Uh, if we're going by the points, essentially we have symmetry we'll start with. Brian for sure has symmetry. Though one could argue that Brian would lose some of the symmetry because of the gradient of color right down the middle between the espresso and the side. This side is much more open. You can see the color between the lines and the side's all muddled uh, and, and washed out, unfortunately. So that could count against symmetry for the entire pour, but unfortunately, Sean has what looks kind of like almost a hexagonal shape base. Uh, that milk looked a lot thinner than I think she was intending. And you can see that here because the crema really didn't hold up from that integration and everything just kind of warped and wobbled. There was not enough foam to stick things in the cup, unfortunately. But Sean does go for a wing with a three stack, then a cut through, then the swan on top, which is an advanced pour. Arguably, I might even give Sean difficulty here. That is one point. Uh, I'm not familiar with who took speed. In this, because her milk is so thin, you know, Sean actually could get color distribution and line clarity. Uh, she would just need speed and a clean cup, but her cup looks pretty overfilled uh, and the execution overall is lacking. So Brian has probably the clean cut point. Um, I'm not familiar if Brian got speed or not. You can see both of these pours. Brian's pour looks really beautiful right off the front, um, but it did begin to sit a little while before we see it at the judges table. Um, but Sean took speed, um, but it does look like she negates the speed point for the clean cup point. Um, there is an issue when you overfill or underfill, that, that point's gonna count against. And even if you get speed, but you had a dirty cup, it negates it because you now have basically five points and now the opponent only really needs three. I had to do math for a second. Let's see if Brian really took that. Yeah, dude, Sean stole that speed point by a split second. That is crazy, which might have made a difference another round, but did not make the difference this round because Brian ultimately did 
win this round. Let's see them one more time. Uh, I would give line clarity to Sean. I would give degree of difficulty to Brian. Actually thinking back on this, I would give execution to Brian. I would give symmetry to Brian. Uh, and I would probably, and that's interesting because I would give color to Sean and I would give line clarity to Sean and I would give speed to Sean. So you have three and three. It comes down to presentation quality, which is gonna be that overfill in Sean's cup. At least from my perspective, looking at these pours, uh, I believe Brian would win this one, um, but not for the lack of a good fight. And that is ultimately what did happen. Brian did end up uh, winning this pour. Okay, so next up we have Itsuki and Prof, the Prophecy. These are two great people, really, really, really strong competitors. Prof is a two-time champion. And Itsuki's doing something that I think is really interesting here in using teacups. Uh, if you're gonna use teacups in the Lotte Art Championship, you have to consider that if you dribble a little bit on the side, you're gonna have to wipe that. And there's a divot, so it's harder for you to get in there to actually wipe it should you be running time on the clock and you gotta get out of there, you know what I mean? Let's actually watch these two pours and see what happened. We don't really get to see much of Itsuki's pour, um, but he is doing a Rosetta style pour. It looks like he might have a little bit of a missing section in the middle bottom of it. And then we have Prof doing a classic tulip. Though in this case, it does not look like the milk is flowing away from Prof. I'm not sure if he had a steaming technicality or if there was an introduction issue and he had trouble getting that base to kind of slide around. It also could have been an espresso thing. But if I remember correctly, that is the pour that Prof takes, but he does go back for a second, let's see. And we can see Itsuki's pour right there is a beautiful rosetta. It has really nice texture, it has really great color. It is missing some elements in the center, which is gonna commonly happen with Itsuki's pours through the rest of the competition. And you can see Prof is looking at his pour. He's debating the choice. Should he put it down? He's already steaming, he might as well pour a second. Um, but we're gonna see, let's go ahead and skip ahead. This is tough, it's tough to be in this space to have these nerves. I never go for a second pour. That's not true, I have. And you can see right here, it is a little bit thicker than I think he was intending. But personally, I would probably take that pour over the first one, even though the first one looks a little bit more uh, line clarity and it looks like it might be a little more technically involved. The second pour to me had better execution than the first pour that Prof put down here at least in my opinion, but let's see those pours on the stage really quick. Let's see those pours on the stage. Uh, so you can see right here, Prof does not get line clarity. There's actually no no clarity between the lines whatsoever. Unfortunately, Itsuki does take that point. Itsuki's also gonna take color distribution. You can see that because that milk was flowing forward. If you want more color in your design, you gotta have the milk flowing away from your pitcher. If it stays scrunched up, you're gonna get something more like what Prof has over here to the right, which is a beautiful pour, but you don't get the line clarity, you don't get the separation. Prof's though is more balanced. Unfortunately, you can see there are a lot of little ripples right here that didn't fully encapsulate at the top. Had those fully come to the top and encapsulated, I would assume that Prof would have gotten the execution point. And even though Itsuki has missing sections here, and, and overall, it's, it's a very intense pour. It looks like he was pouring kind of chaotically, there's a chance, there's a chance they might give him execution, though in this case, I think they did give Prof execution here. Uh, so Itsuki has speed, Itsuki has color, Itsuki has line clarity, Itsuki, all, all he needs is execution, degree of difficulty, uh, symmetry, and that's a pretty easy one to get in this case. And I think it comes down to that. Because over here, Prof's cup is a little underfilled as well, and I'm not sure if either one had a spill. You can look right here. Um, and Profs does have a little bit of a marking right here and the judges are gonna count every single one of those and they're gonna weigh it against your opponent. And if your opponent has less spills or an underfilled cup, they're gonna get the point. And that is unfortunately what I think happened here. Uh, ultimately, this, this round would go to Itsuki uh, and Prof would be out in the top 16 for the New York win, but not for nothing. And next up we have Kengo and Troy. Uh, and Kengo is the current, or was the current, world champion from the last Coffee Fest out in Florida and is now fighting for the title uh, against Troy. And Troy is a local New Yorker and is actually really beastly, one of the best competitors out there. A lot of people underestimate Troy's ability, but Troy is not a world champion yet, and Kengo is. Okay, so both competitors, you gotta be quick because that speed point, while it's not the most important point, 
It doesn't matter. Kengo is going now. Dropping in. Beautiful, beautiful wing. Let's see what happens. I don't believe Kengo takes the first port. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. I could be wrong about that. And he's putting a lot in those top layers. If you're going to put so much in the top layer, you want to make sure you allocate space within your base so that it doesn't overwrap. You don't want your base to be coming all the way to the top at that point. And Kango wipes and takes speed, so he does take his first pour. Actually, that's pretty wild. Uh, and it looks like Troy here is going for a wing wing 4-1. It's a beautiful pour. Uh, however, you can kind of tell that it's sitting a little high in the cup. I think what Troy needs to do here is instead of just putting it deeper in the cup, he also needs to integrate a little bit more. It seemed like a lot of layers were starting to overfold on themselves and everything was generally kind of smushed up. You can see it here with just all these layers kind of wrapping in on themselves, but not with the balance you'd normally want from a pour because it's sitting high in the cup and you have all this crimmer ring right here that's inconsistent. But not only should he put it deeper in the cup, he should integrate a little more so that these things don't don't overwrap essentially. And by integrate a little more, I mean add like maybe like five or 10 mils more of milk before starting that pour, especially if your milk is gonna be that flowy gooey kind of style. You don't want it to, to flowy gooey too high in the cup. But if I remember correctly, Troy takes this, uh, takes this cup and puts it down, wipes it and ends up submitting this pour. And that is accurate, yes. So let's go ahead and see these two next to each other. And you can see immediately, Kengo has the structure, but Kengo has a lot of asymmetry. But it's not just an asymmetry point. It's also a balance point. Troy's, generally speaking, is not balanced in the cup. And it has some asymmetry issues. Now, we're not going to go count them one by one, but, but you can see Troy's design is also half compromised on this side compared to this side. His right side is much stronger as well as Kengo, which means they're both right side biased whenever they're pouring. It's not to say that Troy won't get any points. I believe Kengo here gets color distribution, uh, speed. Kengo also gets, I believe, degree of difficulty. I also think they might have give Kengo execution. Um, that is debatable, but it's kind of hard to say here because Troy did mostly execute, um, but there's a lot of issues here. Um, though actually Kengo's cut through is, is pretty compromised and a little puffy, so they probably did give Troy execution. They probably gave Troy execution and they probably gave Kengo the clean cup point as well because it does look like it does look like Troy's cup here is a little underfilled. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a six versus one or even a five versus two point system. But in the end, Kengo was victorious in this round. And you can see it right here. That's crazy. Kengo definitely has that line clarity, that color distribution, that degree of difficulty and he has speed. So he really doesn't need any more points. But if he were to get more points, he probably wouldn't get symmetry, but he'd probably get execution, I think, from looking at it at this angle. It's, it's hard to say, but at the end of the day, the judges did vote for Kengo. Next up, we have Jacob Kingsley, and we have Fluke, aka DQ Fluke. Fluke is actually a world champion. Jacob is not. Uh, this is actually kind of crazy top 16 because half of the competitors are world champions, and a few of them are getting knocked out. But Jacob is not an unseasoned pro. I believe this is actually the round where Jacob takes Fluke out and Fluke, past world champion, underperforms a little bit here. Um, so let's go ahead and jump to the pores. Let's jump to the pores. Oh, very beautiful already, okay. All right, we're gonna jump to the pores. We have Fluke and Jacob pouring at the exact same time. So it's neck and neck, could go anybody's way with speed. And Fluke has a really beautiful wing base here. It is a little lopsided. And he is coming in a little high for that second for that second ripple, but that's his style. He likes that, so to each his own. I think he's gonna tap that little heart on top. And honestly, that's a beautiful pour. But Jacob puts down, and Jacob debates the speed point, and then takes it anyway. He debated putting that pour down, and then he took it anyway. Kind of love that. Then we're gonna go forward with Fluke. We'll jump ahead to that second pour. Oh, this is what happened. Now. In the actual live, I was commenting that if you went for something simple, say like a ripple basin of five top and it was clean, it had good symmetry and good lines, you could potentially win. Maybe not the whole championship, but you could at least win a round or two. But we are on day three and Fluke is pouring a wing three, which is a rather basic pour at this level of the stage. And you can kind of see the lines in the milk aren't perfect. There's something going on with that milk. It looks a little grainy. It looks, it looks a little... Um, it looks a little compromised. This is a case where, oh, well, I know what happened. Fluke only had two seconds on the clock because he went back for that pour. He didn't have time to grab the other one. 
And I think we would all agree that that first pour was a lot, oh, a lot stronger than his second. Um, but we're going to put those down. That's tough. That's really tough to battle. Uh, Jacob put down a beautiful pour. Jacob definitely has color distribution. Jacob has line clarity. Jacob took speed. All Jacob needs is symmetry, which I don't believe they get in this round. I believe that goes to fluke. Uh, Jacob also needs execution, which I may might give to them, but I don't know that I would give that to fluke either. Sort of a little tough. I mean, Jacob's cut through is, is it only a little bit wobbly, whereas fluke is pretty substantial and is also missing a lot of elements in his pour. And it's a simple pour, so almost unforgivable. And then there's also the element of clean cup. I'm not sure if Fluke spilled or not, but we didn't get a chance to see that. There would not have been a chance to even wipe it. And then you have degree of difficulty, which is probably where this went. So Jacob has degree of difficulty, line clarity, color distribution, speed. Wouldn't matter if they didn't have the clean cup point. Wouldn't matter if they didn't have the symmetry point. It wouldn't matter if they didn't have the execution point. It is a 4-3 game here and potentially more on Jacob's side. Which is kind of interesting though what i would do to correct this because jacob's pour here is kind of falling apart in the base i definitely think that milk was a little bit on the thinner side uh, and i do believe jacob went too far to the back for the introduction of their pour and um, though that middle ripple is very clean and over here we see flukes it's just muddy there's something going on that milk texture did not look quite right it was probably just coarsely textured i'm not sure if those bubbles didn't get a chance to break down or something there's not a lot of separation of color here. I think Fluke should have gone with the first pour strategically and not done this. Uh, Jacob has some beautiful middle layers up here, but there is some compromises right here where they don't wrap on the final. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're not only wrapping the top, you wanna make sure you get a little bit further in each wrap as you add layers. That way when you push that last one in, it'll pull them all in at the same time, which means that that third layer, yes, is the one that did not get pushed deep enough and the first two were pushed too deep and they actually over wrapped um, which is not great but if you want to avoid this warping you need to come in with a little bit less flow if you're gonna have milk this thin you also want to start a little bit higher in the cup so that if it does blow out your base it's not gonna do it at the back of the cup but it didn't really matter it didn't really matter because Jacob still took this round. The next round we have is Haley versus Andy. It's very exciting because Haley ended up taking this entire championship and is the first place winner and current world champion from Laco. And if you want me to do a video all about Haley, let me know in the comment. We can go through one by one of every pour she did, which in my opinion was one of the best performances I've seen in Coffee Fest in a long time. I mean, each round was, was absolutely stunning. I'd love to do a deep dive on that if you guys are interested. And then we have Andy, who is also an incredible competitor. He's not a world champion, but he's an incredible competitor with a lot of skill. Uh, and as you already know, the results of this Haley does move on. But we have to delineate the points. Alrighty, so Andy was pouring first, which sometimes can make a big difference. But Haley is uh, integrating a lot less and doing a really quick rosy. So I wouldn't be surprised if she finishes first. Andy is doing a wing-wing uh, looks like 4-1, 5-1, sorry. Uh, and look at that, Haley. You can already tell that Haley has color distribution, line clarity, execution, uh, symmetry. It's such a beautiful pour right off the bat. And Haley doesn't hesitate a second. She takes that speed point, which is the right call. And Andy was pretty close behind. I'm not sure if Andy goes for a second pour here. Nope, he takes it. Uh, Andy's pour is absolutely beautiful. I think for many other rounds, Andy would have moved on here. But in this case, I mean, we need to pull it up on the screen. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look what Haley is bringing to the competition. Those open leaves in the Rosetta. Beautiful symmetry on the actual wing of the Rosetta. And, and I mean, hey, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. And, and you can see the color distribution is just perfect. It's all wrapped in those leaves. And Haley has line clarity for sure. You know, Andy over here has a really strong pour, and again, any other day might have been a pretty strong competitor, but Haley just came in with something really beautiful. I mean, that milk looks perfect. That milk is so silky. A little bit of an execution issue in the cut through, but Andy's missing some chunks here for symmetry. Uh, it looks like Andy needs to get closer to the surface when he's starting that base to be able to get those lines to stick and ripple a little bit wider and really stay close to the surface and stick it through. I mean, Haley here, She's landing, she's throwing that base, and then she's integrating 
all that color with these heavy rocks all the way back. And one cool thing about rosettas is once you start doing a rosetta, you kind of just got to be in the right place at the right time. And if you have the perfect flow, you have a really good whip of the milk, you should be able to move it back. And you can see Kenji in the back getting ready for the next pour. You should be able to move it back all the way to the top to capture those open leaves. And doing so tends to make your milk look really nice because you're usually transferring to get that really heavy flow from something like a larger pitcher. Um, I believe Haley does transfer, but she actually uses a much smaller pitcher. She uses the Ivy, I believe. Yes, the Ivy pitcher you can see right here. An interesting thing about that is because typically we teach to use an open rounded spout pitcher whenever you want to do these heavy wing flows. So you want to do something like like the pitcher I use or, you know, the Starbucks pitcher, Ikea pitchers are great. But what's interesting about Haley is she's using the Ivy and I might have an Ivy. I'll be right back. Okay, I don't have an Ivy, but I do have this pitcher, uh, kind of similar shape, more or less. Um, but what's interesting about the Ivy is it has a, if you see right here on this, how this extended part of the spout, basically the launching point for the milk to come down and be directed into your cup. It's, it's rather long on this pitcher. The Ivy is a lot shorter and a lot more uh, stout. So essentially what that means is if you're flowing with enough flow rate, you're actually going above this little triangle line right here which means your milk can still do those really wide wings, uh, sorry, leaves in your design. Uh, and that is actually pretty cool. I've never seen someone do it with an Ivy. Um, takes a lot of talent to win a championship with a pitcher that is not designed to do what you're using it for. Haley does win, but if we're giving points, I mean, Haley has basically all the points here. Uh, and Haley would end up taking that round. And here, Chris. Haley Henderson is the winner. Next up and not least exciting, one of the more exciting rounds of the day, we have Kinji or Lane Tanaka going against Christian. Uh, Kinji is a two-time champion along with other places. I believe Kinji's won second, Kinji's won third. Kinji's one of the strongest competitors we have in Loco right now. Um, talk about being locked in. Kinji is the essence of locked in. And then you have Christian, who has also won a few throwdowns. Um, I'm not actually sure which ones exactly he won, uh, but Kinji is locked in. Kinji's ready to go. Maybe looking a little tight. We're gonna jump ahead. We're gonna see the flow. Beautiful wing base here. Kinji does a landing high in the cup, letting that base stick for a second and then flowing it forward. Though I will say the milk looks maybe a little thin here for Kinji's style. Uh, I think maybe if the milk I mean, Kenji's gonna take it immediately. Like he's gonna take that pour without even a second doubt. I mean, the pour is beautiful too and there's no spillage. So Kenji's gonna take speed and clean cup, which is a really strong move because now you have those two points. Christian is going in for a pour. Let's see what it is. We can't really see from this angle. If I believe it's a Rosetta. Oh, that's what happened. No, it's a tulip and I remember this. He did spill and at this point you can see on the clock, there's only 40 seconds. You don't have time to go for another. You have to clean it. Your, your pour is gonna lose execution. You're gonna lose clean cup immediately. You already lost speed. Now Kinji only needs one point to beat you. There's honestly no point in wiping it. And you missed it because it's unfortunate because you don't see that the, the spill is all over the cup. And that is otherwise a really beautiful pour. There's a little bit of incons inconsistencies in Christian's base. Um, I think he could have you know, stuck through those ripples a little longer. It looks like maybe he's he's doing something of a of an off rhythm. Some of them are wrapping, some of them are not. I mean, and you can see that right there. I mean, Kenji definitely has thinner milk. Christian's milk popped a little bit better here. I would honestly say though that, that Kenji probably has color distribution, execution. A degree of difficulty is arguable because Christian did put a lot of stuff in that cup but it's not really executed. And I don't really know if I personally want to give you difficulty if you didn't execute. It's just you go went for something difficult, doesn't mean you did it. Kenji has a ripple in this third layer. So it is a wing, wing, solid, wing, solid kind of variation. Christian has a wing uh, two, and then one, two, three, four, and then a single top heart on top. Really beautiful, um, just sloppy all over though. Unfortunately, I feel kind of mean saying it like that but these, these ripples didn't come in uh, and it's just inconsistent. A little bit of asymmetry. So Kenji's gonna get symmetry. At the end of the day, Kenji took so many points on this based on some of the shortcomings that Christian had, not necessarily based on these pores as they are. That spill really messed things up. And it took you two points and you lost speed. 
So you really only need one to beat. So it is unfortunate. And Kenji did win this round, but Kenji's next rounds would also be a little bit interesting. And we'll review that in the next video. And then we have one more round for you guys today, which is Lena and Sagato. We only have four minutes on my battery, so I gotta make this quick. Uh, Lena is a good friend. Sagato is an old friend, longtime competitor. I believe this round uh, eventually did go to Sagato, but let's look at the pours. Lena coming in with a really, okay, so we're gonna pause it right there. Lena came in with a really beautiful base, but you can see if, if she had done more ripples right here, see how it's not wrapping in all the way? She needed to continue to ripple. She stops early, leaving this pocket here empty, which she's gonna try to fill with a layer, but she's starting too high, so that pocket's gonna stay. If you start somewhere here, you might be able to manipulate it to make that pocket disappear, but really what you need to do is you need to continue forward with your ripples so that these two don't just go in, but they all go in, and then you have a solid base. And so, so here, you can see there's that missing layer, uh, which is, is unfortunate. And then here, we're already doing the stacked hearts a little too soon. There's a lot of space left in the cup. You could do like 20 stacked hearts with that much space if you're pro. And the issue with that is it makes them really chunky and really big as opposed to all these thinner lines. And you get a shape kind of like that. Little top heavy, um, but it's not a bad pour. Lena should be proud of it. Though I know for a fact Sagatu is gonna pour a monster pour because it's Sagatu. Uh, he's just incredible. Let's go ahead and see what he did. And Lena went back for a second pour. A little better in the ripples, but she didn't take it and it was a little thinner, which is the right call. Steal the speed, but here's the deal. If you're gonna steal the speed, clean the cup. What are you doing? You have time. And look at the Sagata right over here. We're just gonna look over to the left a little bit. Is pouring a perfect base and it's the second pour, which is crazy. And Sagato is actually doing something different than what we've seen him do in most competitions, which is usually a wing one, one, four, one. Sagato is doing a wing, wing, I think four, one. Yeah, a little different variation. Definitely more of a classic coffee fest. And honestly, based off this and looking at the points, Sagato doesn't even need to wipe that cup and could still lose the speed and the wipe cup point, but he's gonna take that wipe cup point, which negates the speed for Lena. And that's really beautiful. I assume it's gonna get color distribution. I assume it's gonna get line clarity. I assume it's gonna get difficulty execution and symmetry, unfortunately. And yeah, if we're looking at right here, I mean, the line clarity is immaculate on Sagatu's. The, the execution is, is just flawless almost, almost. Sagatu could touch down with the pitcher a little more on that beginning part of the ripple. You can see there's a little bit of beige in the base, unfortunately. Uh, and you can see these little hooks up here like they don't, they almost all go in except for these last two. He could have, he could have been working on that a little more and got some more color in the second wing, maybe some better separation in these little layers right here. Um, but Lena has not enough sticking to the base at the bottom and you can just see it. And then that second layer was not ripply enough to get the color integrated. Um, but the top part's really great. Uh, maybe if not a little too soon with the underfilled cup, which still you already spilled so that clean cup point's already gone. But I think Sagato has almost all the points here. It's a crazy round. Um, but Sagato ultimately did move on. Let's see if we can get these from a different angle really quick. I mean, yeah, you can really see the difference there. Which one grabs your attention? And that is it for today. We are gonna go over the top eight and the finals in the next video. Let me know what you guys thought about this. If you enjoy this kind of overview, if you enjoy dissecting these pores a little bit more for the top eight, we're gonna get a little bit more nitpicky and you're gonna see what it is that champions pick apart whenever they're actually making latte art.